Can you see behind me? Isn't this just marvelous? Here it is late January, and I was beginning to think winter was going to pass Nova Scotia by. But two nights ago, we received 20 centimeters of snow. First real snowfall of 2023. And I had to get out today. I just had to get out today. Because, well, okay, for a couple of reasons. I wanted to get out so badly. But also, tomorrow night, we're going to get 20 millimeters of rain. It's going to wash this all away and then turn it to ice, which makes the woods travel trickier. But not today. Today is spot on perfectly. I'm running about minus 8 degrees Celsius. Zero wind, zero clouds. It doesn't get any better than this. So what are my plans for today? Very simple. I'm going to set up, make myself some lunch, have a cup of coffee. And in response to a viewer request, I thought I'd share with you all the things that I received as gifts over Christmas, as well as some new outdoor gear that I'm testing. If you're interested in seeing what I have, keep watching. All right, all settled in, having my first cup of coffee, because I will be having another one after lunch. All right, where to begin, where to begin? All right, so maybe just before we begin, uh, please don't take this as showing off. Uh, I had somebody asked if I would share what Christmas gifts I received that were bushcraft oriented. Actually, pretty much everything was bushcraft oriented. I have brought out most of them that I received. And it's not a lot of gifts. Uh, one of them is a little expensive, but the rest are very reasonable, as you'll see. Uh, I left a couple things at home. They're books. They will come into future videos. I just decided not to bring the books out today, but I will be talking about them because I think books are, uh, they're not out of fashion. They're still something that I think everybody should own and read, especially when you're out in the woods on a day like this, is to sit and read. I think it's a great pastime. All right, let's get started. First thing right off the top, oh, maybe even before we begin, this hat is not one of my Christmas gifts. This is one of my winter tillies. I have Oops, I'm embarrassed to say this. Four winter tillies. Two of them are this style with the brim. The other two are caps. And uh, this I've had probably 20 years. And it just doesn't get the woods time it uh, deserves or the wear time at all that it deserves. So I started, thought I'd wear it today and I may start wearing it even more in the woods. Uh, the reason I wore it today is so that I'd have a brim because of the brightness of the sun. And uh, that way I wouldn't be squinting too much in the sun. It is made of wool. Uh, they are such a great hat. They have features that make it a great winter hat for Woods City, wherever, but that's not the topic today. All right, first gift right off the top. New pair of gloves. 
so my daughter Megan bought these for me. They are leather palms, goat leather palms, exceptionally soft and nylon backs. They're moderately insulated and they're not meant to be overly warm. These are my hiking gloves, what I wear in the winter when I'm going to a location because you know you're going to get a little warm anyway. So cold hands is usually not an issue. As you can see, I'm, you know, minus eight or actually probably minus five now. I'm not wearing any gloves because I warmed up on the hike in. But you do want something that has a grip, and these have really good grip being goat skin, and I've treated them, of course, with dubbin. Um, you want something that is waterproof, or at least mostly waterproof. If they're not completely waterproof, I'm, I'm okay with that because they will dry. And you want something that's just, but flexible. You know, you still have some tactile ability to handle whatever it is that you're handling as you go into the woods. When I get to where I'm going, I have insulated work gloves that I use for uh, wood processing, building fires because they're so well insulated. And I just reserve these for hiking into the woods, I guess you might say. Let's put those one aside. Uh, what else can I show? Oh, I got a whole bag of toys here. Let's start with the big one. Let's start with the big one. So my wife really surprised me. She said, uh, just a little bit before Christmas. You got to give me a list. You got to give me some ideas. You know, we we uh, we don't have a lot of money, extra money this year, but give me a couple things on my list. And I said, really, I can't think of too many things that aren't expensive. They're all kind of in the expensive range. So I gave her the list anyway, and she bought the top one off of the list. Silky Big Boy Outback version. <laughs> I mean, what a saw. Look at this thing. Now, I'm not going to give you any review or any comments other than, oh, wow, maybe that's my comment for this saw. But uh, you've likely seen these things. Look at the size of this thing. So this is the Outback, or not the Outback, the Big Boy has been around for a while with Silky, and it's been on my list. But when they came out with the Outback, and I read that it has a tiny bit more thickness to the blade. Uh, it has that coating on the outside of it. It has this hard handle on here. We'll go more into details at a later time. I said, that's the one I want. A little expensive, but my wife came through and that's my prized possession. It hasn't even been put to wood yet, but I will tell you it's sharp. Okay, what else came this Christmas? Oh, also from my wife. So these are the two things I got from my wife. You have seen me talk, maybe, if not, you've seen me use these Kapilka. This is my smaller of the two Kapilka mugs, which is a combination of wood fibers and poly resins. And they look very traditional and modern at the same time. And they're great. I brought the bolo today for what I'm gonna be having for my lunch. And one thing, I did a review on them, and one of the things I said was, on my list, the last thing I wanted was their cutlery set because just to complete the set, you know, of things that I own from Kapilka, how about their cutlery set? Not expensive, but really nice to have. And my wife came through with the cutlery set. Spoon, fork, knife, and little spoon. I guess tea, coffee spoon, sugar spoon, whatever you want. Uh, I put little cores through them, then put them on a little carabiner just to hold them on all together and I can take them off the carabiner and use as I want. Uh, Wow, you know, the, <laughs> these are great. They they complete the set. I wasn't too sure about the for, uh, the knife, but believe it or not, it's almost sharp enough to cut me. So it'll be sharp enough for any food that I'm going to be eating. Not maybe food prep, but when you're eating, cutting up steak or anything else, I think that will be uh, really nice. I really love this. This is really, really special. Now, a couple more things from my kids. A spatula. Yeah, this is a stainless steel spatula. It was purchased through Lee Valley, and it's just a little bit nicer. It's what they call a cookie lifter, and so it's a very small spatula. It's got a little protector on the end of it. That probably won't last too long, but a nice little thin spatula for working in my fry pan out here. Great thing. What else is in my bag of toys? Oh, here's something. I've seen these. Um, I wasn't sure about them, but uh, I put it on my list and someone got it for me. This is the auger that also has a tapered end on it for forming one inch diameter pegs. So it's kind of like a scotch eyed auger and you can make your own pegs for leg table pegs, whatever you need, a one inch diameter peg, maybe for a mallet that you're building. And uh, it comes in a little, I don't know, I think it's, no, it's not real leather. 
Uh, and then another little wrap that would go around the auger end of it if you're trying to hold on to it while you tap the tapered end through a piece of wood. So uh, another nice little gift. What else? Kind of feel like Santa Claus digging things out here. Oh, this is sweet. Mora Eldris, right? Nice little knife. Did I need it? No, of course not. But look how cute that is. And functional, believe it or not. Now it is small, there's no question. It is tiny. But maybe that's all you need for a lot of the tasks. Uh, you know, you can strike fire steels with it. You can do a lot of little tasks. And it's just so light and goes around my neck. And I like that it was came in orange, right? So that when you drop it, uh, you can find it again. All right, let me see. Really, that's it. That's all I got for Christmas. And I'm so proud of these things. I'm so happy at these things. And I feel very fortunate. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just get together a few things that I have for testing that I wanna share with you. Okay, I almost uh, forgot a couple of items because I was actually sitting on them. And they are a couple of things my cousin made for me. She knit these and uh, she does watch my videos. So uh, she figured uh, I needed a couple of new hats for the woods. So let me just share with you the two hats. So the first one is a pattern she calls the big man's hat. And I have a big head. And I get made fun of it for, on occasion, but not with this hat. This hat is plenty big with slack to spare. So it's nice that it's not so tight and binding and I can fold it up a good distance and cover my ears. So yeah, thank you, Laura, for making this for me. I'm gonna be enjoying this and wearing this. It's a nice material, nice color. And the other one, this is different, okay? This is called a Viking helmet hat. Now, when, I, when she first said that, I thought maybe it was something that Vikings wore under their helmets. And I guess it could be, but that's not what the design is supposed to be. The design is supposed to look like a metal hat that a Viking might wear, a little helmet. So here's the design. As you can see, it has a, like a lowered section in the back that covers over my ears. I'll give you a close-up in a second for it, but it's just like a skull cap almost that's thin enough. And this is the kind of thing I'd like wearing moving through the woods while you're going to build up some warmth. Sitting, they're probably going to need a little bit more warmth than this, but while I'm moving and, and building up heat, this would work just fine. Just to give you a few close-ups of it, you can see how that lowers down there. Now, you could also turn it uh, around and fold that flap up. So if you wanted a little bit more protection across your forehead, but it's knit. I wonder if that's showing. Can you see? Yes, it is. Good. All right. So yeah, <laughs> it does look like something a Viking might have worn. All right. Put those aside. My other hat back on. Okay. Now, uh, all right, here's something that I've been testing for a little bit of time. So that's what we're moving on to. We're moving on to some new products that were sent to me uh, for testing and review. So some of these are coming out into the woods for the very first time today. Not that I haven't been playing with them and testing them at home, but uh, real world tests, right? See what I can do with them out here. Here's one that I have been testing for a little while now. I've mentioned it a few times. The Mora Garberg. And, you know, I, I, I did a review of the Mora knives that I own, and somebody said, yeah, you need to add the Mora Garberg to the list. And my comment was that uh, I didn't know if I needed it at all because I have the heavy duty, and I thought it's just as good, right? Well, the only way to know for sure is to compare them. So one of my viewers bought, the, bought this for me, and I'll give them credit when I do the review, but one of my viewers actually paid and for this knife for me to have, and uh, I like it. I do. It's not without its, I don't want to call them criticisms it's, and, or cons, but it, it has features of it that may or may not appeal to everybody, and I'll, when I do the review, I'll mention them, but what a perfect utilitarian knife. It really, as far as bushcraft goes, it may not be the prettiest knife in my collection, far from it, but it is one of the most functional knives that I have for sure. Okay, let me put that back in the sheath. That's the one I'm wearing on my belt. It came with the multi-mount, so it's not the leather fold-over pouch, but the one that uh, is just a plastic mount, very much, or plastic sheath, very much like most more knives come with. 
and uh, a, but a mount that you can mount it to that you can strap to a backpack or to I guess in a vehicle or wherever else you want to uh, so I'll, I'll feature it all when I get to that video okay I recently released some videos from a company work tough gear and they're well received and the Two knives that I reviewed were the Kodiak and the Wolverine from Aurora Borealis Knives in Ontario. And I've spoken quite a bit with the designer, Alex, and uh, you know, his knives are very Canadian. Maybe that's the best way to describe them. I really like both of them. Uh, I got some comments on them that weren't as positive, that they looked like other knives. Well, it's, there's only so many designs under the sun, right? Some knives are going to re remind you of other knives for sure. And sometimes imitation, or at least inspiration, is a great compliment to the design. So uh, after those knives uh, were reviewed and I put those videos out, Vic at Work Tough Gear offered to send me a couple of more. He asked me what would I be interested in, and I told him. I expected, I gave him a couple knives, and I said, I thought to myself, he'll send one of them. No, he sent three of them. Okay, he sent three of them. Let me start with this one. So this one is known as the Clapache, designed by Andy Tran. A small knife for sure, very thin. It's 2.5 millimeters. It's lightweight, and it works well as a neck knife. That's how I have it set up, and I've been wearing it. And I've actually been wearing this EDC around the house and out and about because you can kind of get it out of the way in, in under a jacket just nicely and actually I think it's still got some food dirt on it I've been using it for food prep at home so if those of you most of you would probably know who Andy Tran is of the YouTube channel Inner Bark Outdoors so Andy has designed this and he talks about his design in one of his videos simple little knife made from SK85 steel so a Middle ground, high carbon steel. There are better steels for sure, but it's not just what the steel is, right? It's all about the heat treat and the design of the knife. And this one is a great design and a spot on heat treat, of course, because that's the way Vic does his knives out at Work Tough Gear. So that's one of the two knives. The one I was kind of most interested in because of the design is this one. This is the Work Tough Gear Nomad EDC. The smallest of three knives designed by, and I hope I get his name right, Zeke Menenche. So Zeke designed this knife and two others. I have one other of Zeke's design that I'll share with you today. And I was most interested in this small one rather than the larger ones because it's designed for EDC. And I kind of like small knives. It's small. It's not that small, but it is small. And even with my XL hands, almost double XL hands, it still works. That's what I'll say about it at this time. It's got some really cool features. The more I play with this, the more I appreciate the design and the work that Zeke put into this. And uh, yes, I've been carrying this EDC on my belt in kind of scout carry across the front so I can just pull it out from the side with those two straps. We'll talk more about that at some point in the future. All I've done is put a little tiny lanyard on it, of course. But look at this. This is, okay, first better show you the case. This came from Work Tough Gear. The knife inside is inside this beautiful padded case. It's a monster. This is another one of those really big knives. I threw a lanyard on it. I do like lanyards on big knives for chopping purposes. This is the Work Tough Gear Nomad Camp Knife. Look at this thing. It's another huge knife. Yes, you can see I've been using it. Huge knife. And what I can tell you about the design, this again also was designed by Zeke Menenchez. And what I can tell you about this design is what Zeke was trying to accomplish. And basically his idea was to build a knife that was what the Bowie knife was historically intended to be. It was meant to be a stabber, a chopper, and a slicer. And this has all of those features nailed in it. And we'll talk, just look at the point. We'll talk more about the design of the point again in a later video, but it's re referred to as a reverse tanto. So it brings the point down a little bit, but it strengthens the point from the way it is clipped like that. It has a weight forward design with a tall, almost full ground 
uh, full flat grind. It's actually a very high saber grind and it comes down to a very thin edge here, but it has all kinds of metal behind it to strengthen it for chopping. So it, uh, the edge is well protected, yet that thinness is great for slicing. And I don't just mean slicing wood, I'm talking about slicing meat, camp meat, the curve on that thing. And now it's a big knife, but it could easily be pressed into food processing. And uh, well, I'll be doing that during the course of the testing. I already have been doing that with the small one at home in the kitchen. But certainly, I think you could probably skin with that, although a little awkward due to its size. So this is the larger of the knives. The handle itself, I've discovered so far, has three positions on it. With the choil and the little uh, scallop there, you can come right up to the edge like that. Oh, I'll say right now, it's not the most comfortable position on the knife, but it's still functional. Then you can move forward to just behind the choil in the finger guard. And then you can move back, all the way back, even off of the edge of the knife if you felt you needed to, to get the most length out of it for chopping. So, you know, a little bit like the Tereva Scrama in that you can do multiple positions on the handle because it is a larger than handle than most on knives. Beautiful looking knife as well. Okay, I, I, I think yeah, I'm sitting there staring at this sort of thing, right? There is Zeke's Maker's Mark on that side and the Work Tough Gear mark on that side. Beautiful. Okay, I gotta put this away because I won't stop playing with it. I am gonna be out here doing some chopping, of course, in a few moments time after the video. Put that down, the other two down. Okay, so the next thing, and actually the last thing that I want to share with you, is something I didn't, really didn't expect. This came out of the blue to me. I had a company, uh, a Canadian company, offer to send me a pair of boots, winter boots. And I was reluctant because I don't do well when it comes to fitting boots. I like to be able to try things on. I hate buying clothes, but boots or shoes especially, over the internet. It's just, uh, how are they going to work? I might end up going to sending them back. And more often than not, I ended up sending them back. But for a long time, I had wanted a pair of muck boots or bog boots, two big names in winter boots, as well as rubber boots. And I have tried them on and I can't wear them. And I, it's usually because of at the top, right at the top, where they come in contact with my calf at its thickest. My calf is too thick. Uh, even without a pair of long johns or a pair of pants, I can't wear the boots. It just digs into my calf. And it doesn't matter how big I get them. I'm, I suppose I can get them in a size where I could get them to work, but then I'd, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to put enough pairs of socks on to get inside of the boots. So I'd, I had just given up on those types of tall rubber boots. Well, when this company offered to send me these boots, I was intrigued, I was hopeful, I went through the sizing process. These are made in Sweden for Swedish winters, so and they're very well respected, and they've received awards for their design. And the boot name is Polyver. Uh, you know, nothing special. Polyver boots. They are a... Well, let me just... I've got them on, right? Okay, I've got to get them off. So the, I will tell you now, uh, they fit. They fit my feet perfectly. They almost don't fit my calf, but they do enough that I can wear them comfortably. But I have to do something with them to make them comfortable. And well, let me get the boot off first and show it to you. All right, I had to find something to put my foot on so I didn't put it in the snow. Here are the boots. They're a compound material, PVC compound material, 100% waterproof, snow collar at the top, they have a, an insulated lining. It does not come out. I wondered if I was going to like that, but then again, bog boots don't come out or muck boots don't come out. It, it, the insulated lining is made from a synthetic fiber mixed with wool. So it feels like a, a wool fiber. It's like a, well, it's not, I'm sure you're not going to be able to see it inside. All right, so here is the thing. When the boots arrived, I looked them over and I thought, I don't know, do they fit? Let me slide my foot in. Yes, they do. Oh, that's nice. Let me go get a pair of extra thick wool socks, which I'm wearing right now. And yes, they still fit. All right, now, I put on a pair of long johns, a pair of wool long johns and a pair of pants, and I couldn't wear them. I couldn't wear the boots because that combination would not go down inside of here for my thighs, the size of my thighs. However, 
The pants that I'm wearing today are kind of like a, not a snowmobile pant, but kind of like a ski pant. They're a uh, soft shell material with a very thin liner on them, and they zip almost up to the knee on the outside. Lo and behold, they fit over the boots. And I, my long johns go down inside, and they're way comfortable. Just plenty of room inside. Now, I have been wearing them out shoveling snow around the house, and I can fold up a pair of jeans to go down inside, but after a while, even that starts to feel tight. I am unusual. Uh, fitting shoes to me is not like for it is for a lot of other people to start with. I have an extra wide forefoot. My, my bottom of my feet are flat from all the years of running and walking the beach. And my heels are too small, way smaller than they should be. And that's the result of too many cortisone shots in my heel to deal with uh, uh, heel spurs. So, by the way, don't do that. Don't, let, don't get cortisone shots in your heel for heel spurs. There is plenty of better treatments out there now. Not back then, but now that's there are. So, as a result, fitting shoes to me is really, really a challenge. And uh, that these fit in my foot, I was just so, so happy about. That they fit over my long johns, I'm so happy about. I would have liked to have been able to tuck pants down inside of them, but it's, it's just not going to happen. These claim to keep you warm down to minus 50 degrees Celsius, which I think is minus 56 in Fahrenheit. That's when the temperatures start to really come close together. They're supposed to remain flexible down to that. I've worn them down to minus 15 and uh, no cold feet. Uh, even now, as I sit here with my feet in the snow, uh, I feel no coldness coming up through them. It's not a review, obviously. I have to get at least another month's wear out in the cold, but uh, so far, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Okay, I think, let me put my boots back on. We'll have a few closing thoughts. All right, I'm just looking around to see, make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, I can start to see as the sun, afternoon moves, I'm gonna move forward if I want the camera to pick up my face. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that is everything. Oh, I am testing something else out, I just realized, but you have seen this before, the Firebox Scout. Um, and so many people have tested it, but I brought it out one day and introduced it on video and said, um, I wasn't sure about the long-term durability. That was not Steve's intent with these things. These were meant to be emergency preparedness type items, yet a lot of people are having multiple, multiple, multiple fires in them and reporting that they are staying in great shape. So. What else can I do except have multiple, multiple fires in it? So I'm going to be carrying that stove around for a while, putting a lot of hot fires in it to see if it degrades at all. And yeah, it's tin plated, non stainless steel. And, and that's the reason why I wonder if it's going to last. It, it's a less expensive way of building a stove, but I don't want to say cheap. It's not that by any means. It seems it's very well designed. It's very versatile, like all Steve's stoves are. But it, again, it wasn't designed for long-term use. It was designed for emergency use, and it's perfect. Uh, can you use it for long-term use? I guess that's what I'm checking out. Uh, each of the items that I shared with you today, including the gifts, I'll do reviews on. Now, the gloves, the gloves that my daughter gave me, I... I can talk about them, but really, the, the, it's really only going to apply to Canadians because they come from Mark's Work Warehouse, or just Mark's now, and they're listed as a driving glove, but the, I like that they're fitted enough that I can wear them out in the woods and have the dexterity. So it won't apply to a lot of my viewers. Everything else, of course, the silky, the work tough gear, uh, obviously the Mora knives, the two Mora knives there, right? I'll be doing reviews on all of those at some point, and... Uh, yeah. You know what? It's a beautiful day. I've been talking too long and I'm itching to get that big knife out and start playing with it and start seeing what, how well it works for chopping. So if you have any questions or comments about any of the items I've showed you, what I'll do is I'll put links and what information I do have in the video description. And again, they're not reviews. They're just, well, I'm showing off a little bit, aren't I? Okay. Get out and explore and take the path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.